Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce you to three animation professionals that have had uh, a common first step in their soon-to-be illustrious careers. They've all won the Student uh, Stratos Tassinos Award for, by Asifa Greece. In 2020, Dimitris Armenakis with All You Can Eat. 2021, Anastasia Papadopoulou with uh, Elevator Alone. And 2022, perfect. Um, Anna Economou with Looking for Joy. So, the question everybody's been dying to uh, answer. Your films, what uh, sign of the zodiac were they conceived and released in? All right, hello everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Dimitris. Okay, according to the screening uh, of, the f of my film, I think it was around June, so it should be Cancer. Or uh, Gemini. Hello, I'm Anastasia. So, my film is uh, Pisces. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so, as everybody knows, Pisces are uh, real creative. They are super lonely, so it's elevator alone. They don't like criticized. And they are doing a great match with Scorpio. So, if you interested, we can have a talk <laughs> later. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Anna. And I think my film was first screened in the end of September, so that would make it a Libra. I don't know anything about Libras. So Me neither. Turn this thing back to you. Perfect. So, Dimitris Armenakis, all, uh, all You Can Eat. Let's go for all I can say about it. Okay, so just to give you a brief, uh, you know, information of my background, I studied at Audiovisual Arts in Corfu, where I did my first short animated film, 2D, uh, called Absorbed, which uh, got me into Royal College of Art in London, uh, which, where I studied from 2017 to 2019. I co-produced and directed their two short films, of which All You Can Eat was the one that uh, won the Star to Stasinos Award. And after that, you know, more things started uh, coming in. Okay, we can see the film in the background without the, the sound, of course, so that uh, you can hear lovely voices instead. And uh, where are, what are you up to right now? At the moment, uh, we have secured uh, from the Greek uh, Film Center uh, funding for uh, my upcoming film, which be, will be released for, um, hopefully uh, next year next spring. The film is called The Synthetic Age and is like a, not a sequel, but a spin-off or in the same universe or someone could say of all you can eat. So are you working alone in Athens, uh, studio apartment? Uh, uh, my apartment in my studio, <laughs> as uh, most people will relate to that. And uh, most people, because it's 2D, are working remotely from various places of the planet from the UK, from Thessaloniki, Athens, you name it. We have a small team, but uh, still consistent. And we're going strong at home. I think we'll manage to finish the production. Okay, let's pass to Anastasia. Thank you, Dimitris. So I'm Anastasia. I grew up in a small city in North Greece. Um, what city would that be? It's called Alexandria. It's not like the known Alexandria in Egypt, but it's a really small city. Um, and 15 years ago, I moved to Athens to study graphic design um, at the University of West Attica. Uh, at the fourth year of my studies, I did the internship as a web designer. And at the end of this internship, I stayed in this company for seven years. So I postponed my studies for work. In Greece, you have the right to postpone your studies for some years. And when I had uh, enough money to stop working, I quit my job and I finished my school. I did uh, my thesis project, which is Elevator Alone. Uh, it's a stop motion short film. And yeah. And where are you now? 
Uh, now I live in the UK. I work as a model maker, set dresser, and puppet maker in stop motion productions. Okay. I also work in Greece for some projects, but I'm based in the UK. Okay, let's move on to Anna. Uh, hello again. Uh, me and Anastasia actually have very similar background stories as uh, I also grew up in a very small city in Greece, just at the complete opposite side of the country. It was in a small, well, not that small, uh, in Kos Island. It's in the southeast of the Aegean. And I also moved in Athens in 2013 to go to the same school, the University of West Attica and the Department of Graphic Design and Visual Communication. Uh, where we first came in contact with uh, the art of animation uh, through the subjects of, uh, how do we say, uh, mathematics? Electives. Elective subjects, yes. And that's when I actually fell in love with it and decided to do my thesis project uh, on that matter. Uh, the name of the film is Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, it's Looking for Joy. It's a film about um, the routine and how it affects you. And the weird thing is I came up with this concept right before COVID. And then COVID and quarantine happened and suddenly a lot more people were connected with the film. So <laughs> that worked in my favor. Animators are always ahead of the times. Yeah. They agree. Yeah, they agree. You know, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so yeah, that was a big part of COVID for me. It actually saved a lot of my mental health during COVID, like making this film. And after that, I did my internship in a studio in Athens as well, learning a lot what more studio about would animation. Lucky animation studio. Yes. Cha-ching! Cha-ching! <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty much about it for school. Uh, oh, no. See, that was 20 seconds, right? <laughs> yeah, you were right. <laughs> That's what you wanted to hear. <laughs> so uh, let's go back to Dimitris, and uh, I'd like to hear more about the film, uh, All You Can Eat. Okay, so at the time uh, I was living in London and uh, if you've ever been there, it's, like a, it's a very hectic city. It took me a while to get a grip of it. And I had some memories of, you know, while I was growing up in Athens. So uh, as I say, animation is like this medium that I use pieces of my knowledge and my experience and put them together in order to produce something new. So I thought like uh, the places I'm visiting in London and the places that are more keen to me in Athens I want to take things from there and put them together like a puzzle. So I took many references from Piraeus Sport, where we used to have a rehearsal space with my band and uh, I really fell in love with the whole architecture and I felt that this is like the real Athens for me, not like the glorious and uh, fancy touristic stuff, but those alleys that, you know, have like um, a sense of living there with uh, the food market and all that stuff. And so I found a relation to London with that, a connection between those two. And that's how I started this film, because I want to make some colorful characters in this environment. And then I came up with the story of what's the story about. And Speaking of London, have, what did you get out of uh, Royal College of Art, uh, RCA? Uh, 2019. And no. I, yeah. What, what did you get? Oh, what did I get? There, okay. Yeah. Um, well, mostly, as many would agree with me, it's the people you meet there. We have it, some people right here. Yeah, we have. Hello, Joao. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, those connections and the creativity that bring it to the table. And it's, it's a nice place to share your ideas with people that uh, have the similar mindset as you do. Apart from the tutorials, the workshops, and all that's being done uh, within your studio and uh, the school, I think it's uh, number one is the people. Good answer. Uh, let's go to Anastasia again. Um, so you came from Alexandria yeah. to Athens and formerly they now univers UNIWA, University <laughs> of uh, West Attica. What did you get out of the whole experience of relocating? And so for me, uh, and people that 
they don't know exactly what they want to do. Uh, this school was great because uh, there are many different uh, uh, courses. Uh, you can do comics, you can do animation, packaging, um, typography. Uh, so it's really nice. You can see uh, many, many things. Um, for me, it was important because I built all my aesthetics and my perspective in art. And I uh, and how did this lead to stop motion and uh, your so film elevator alone? As I said, I was a web designer for many years. Uh, on day, at night, I was a graphic designer and photo editing. So I was all the time in a computer. And when I decided to do my thesis, I wanted to do something like more practical because uh, I always like to do crafts and do jewelry and everything. So I decided to do a stop motion movie. I had no idea what I was doing uh, that time. So I, I bought some clay, I bought some paper, some wire, and uh, started practicing. Um, when I had my script, uh, I quit my job and I started building all the sets uh, and the puppets. And uh, when the first current came, I was totally ready for the shooting. Good thing is that I did the shooting in my flat, so I had all the time to do the animation, so it worked really good for me. And because it was a Pisces, as you said, uh, that's why it had yeah. such a good career in the festival yeah. circuit, of course. Let's go to Anna again. I know you have similar experience, but I'd like to hear it uh, from you. What I got out of it? What you got out of it, and how was it to come to another city to relocate, to study? Well, uh, to begin with, I think that Athens is kind of a difficult city, relocating from a very small place, because uh, the community of students is not as tight as in other cities, so the experience is very different. And for me, like all my friends and everybody I knew was in different cities and I had to start all over again as happens for many people. So that was kind of rough, but I really liked the school. Uh, so <laughs> that was good, made friends easily. And <laughs> so yeah, uh, the school was great, as I said. And of just an, like Anastasia said, it's very easy for someone that doesn't really know what they want to do to find their way. But thing for me was what I wanted to do occurred in the third year <laughs> of school. So up until that point, I was kind of like up in the air, don't know what I'm doing and all of that. And still after finding out that animation was what I wanted to do, I wasn't really... Uh, secure and confident with what we had the time to learn in just two semesters of class. And this is why I decided to stay in Athens and attend the uh, masters of 2D and 3D animation in Univa as well, which is a new masters that actually began shortly after I graduated, which is very, very fun. Perfect. And how did the idea for your film come up? How you said it came before quarantine. It did. it did. Well, uh, you see in the film that there is this girl that, well, it's pretty much <laughs> what I was doing. She was going to school, she was working at the same time, and then she was doing other stuff, and it was all the same circle over and over and over again, killing every creativity she could possibly want to have. And well, I was trying at the time to come up with an idea for a film. And as I said, no creativity, so no ideas would come up. And I was like, in the end, well, hey, I'm just going to say that. So yeah, and try to say it the best way I can. And because it was uh, Taurus, the film really didn't it was do a anything, Libra. right? <laughs> I don't really believe in zodiac <laughs> signs, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was all a ruse to get you hooked. So, uh, what would you like for the university to have done more, like collaborations with uh, other uh, universities and stuff like that? Well, sure, you can always 
collaborate more and have more networking opportunities for your students. Like uh, we have a lot of Erasmus programs, uh, we can go abroad and students come back and the interaction with them is always great and it gives us a lot back there's still a lot more than we can do. And what I would personally like more is uh, to feel more confident walking out of the school as to what I'm headed at in the professional world, which means for me that I didn't really know how to build a portfolio or I wasn't exactly sure like what to look for, who to look for, um, to talk to, to hire me or whatever, or situations that would come up when I was working professionally. So yeah, I think that I would love to have some more preparation in that aspect. Let's move on to Anna. S Anastasia, mm -hmm. I'm, so I'm sorry. Uh, same, like what would you like? So yeah. I agree with uh, Anna, of course. Uh, we had the Erasmus program, which was great. I've been to Budapest for six months. Um, uh, for me, I would like to, uh, because um, for stop motion, we didn't have like a studio that I could work there or like materials. And so I had to do everything in my flat. Um, and we didn't have a budget because, I mean, it's a graphic design school, but to do stop motion without a budget, it's too much. So I had to work some years to keep the money. Well, that kind of answers Anna's uh, requests. Th that prepared you for the truth of animation. Yeah. You will never have budget. <laughs> yes, that's true. They know what I'm saying. Yes. And um, uh, after I finished my movie, I uh, would expect a bit more like um, uh, my school to promote the movie more because I do all the promotion alone and there is no like, um, yeah. Marketing department yeah, of a school. No, no. I don't think and that's I think that, that like has to do with uni. I don't think any school has yes. a marketing department for student films, right? And uh, the university, I mean, my department knows, but the university, they don't know that there is a movie that some movies that they are out there around the world. Okay, so Dimitri, cheer us up a bit. Uh, okay, so I, I have a different experience and I would like to talk uh, also from my BA degree in audiovisual arts, which is more of like um, a universal knowledge, both theoretical and technical. Uh, I think uh, it would benefit more students that are keen on working towards animation and with equipment and more uh, animation courses, not just 3D modeling, for example, but how to do animation, how does animation work in timeline, and you know, no matter the technique. Uh, but it was the nature of the school that didn't offer uh, this, you know, this kind of knowledge to head towards specific animation, on only theory in art or history of art or drawing. And yeah, in DMA, I think that also distribution was a thing that we didn't have a way to expose the films apart from the final graduation show. And yeah, I think it's very crucial because it's your first step into the market and you want to establish that you know, your work is out there and it would really help if uh, more schools would, you know, you know and help that. Out of us four, you have the most experience of uh the culture shock of a foreign school with a Greek school. So can you elaborate a bit on this? Like, was it so much better? Was the grass greener on the other side in the end? Well, not really, because I think that it's, again, the typical answer that you expect me to say, your personal work. Like, if you don't really go home and take all those resources and see what you can do with that, uh, you know, no tutor is going to help you out and to say, oh, this is the right path to go and you're going to find your way through animation, uh, even in London, is like you have to look through the people you know and how you're gonna, you can make something together or collaborate. Like I know many people that have worked together as friends and now they just have opened their own studios as you know, as pairs of two or three. So there you go. It's like, uh, if no tutor told them like, oh, this is how you should do it. It just said like, okay, we like each other. So our works, you know, have fluidity together. So let's try that. 
I think both ladies have kind of the same experience about the personal effort. So let's go again to Anastasia about alone and elevator alone. And yeah. Um, I, when I had the script, I thought that I was needing like two, three months to do the whole movie. Uh, it took me like more than one year. Uh, I would like to, uh, I mean, at the time it was good to be alone because it was COVID and if I was in the university with other people, it would be much, much harder. So at the end, it was good for me to do uh, almost everything alone. But me as a person, I always believe that it's what we do. Um, don't ask what uh, the university can do for you. Ask what you can do for your university. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's go to Anna and again, let's... The difference between what you do and how the solitary aspect of it. Oh, while making of, of Not only making a film, but the learning experience. Oh yeah, like uh, when you go to any school, I think, like not even... <laughs> not even uh, just when you're doing a project, but in the class itself, there is also a lot of different levels of students and like uh, working to get, no, what I was trying to say, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's not only up to the school or the curriculum or the professor to teach you that stuff and make you good. It's also like, how do you take that knowledge and apply it to yourself and do more digging and searching and all of that and how you actually benefit from it and take every, every opportunity handing, handed to you so that you can move forward. So I think that every school is supposed to give you a very strong and solid base. And after that, it's just how much you want to do it. Anastasia, you felt like jumping in there, but you didn't have a microphone, <laughs> go. I, uh, yes, I agree. Uh, of course, uh, uh, our teachers were really helpful and uh, it was very important for me, especially for the script and the storyboards. It was uh, really help helpful, uh, Mr. Eleni, Mrs. Eleni Muri. Uh, but after that, yes, you have to work. Everything they said would be completely different if Eleni Muri wasn't here. Yes. And they're now embarrassed. <laughs> no. They've got a lovely teacher over there. So let's open the mic to the crowd. Um, I'm sure we have uh, great questions because we paid them to have great questions. Hello, thank you so much for your um, information. It's been really fascinating to hear your different stories. You've all been incredibly diplomatic and I thank you for that. Um, <laughs> As someone who teaches in education, I wonder if you could say, like you've spoken about, oh, you know, what your colleges did that was good and you bring a lot of it yourself and all of that. But is there anything that universities and colleges can do that actively hinders you? <laughs> like, how can they muck it up? What would you, what would you prefer they didn't do? Do you know what I mean? Like, how do they get in your way? Should I go for it? Yeah, go for okay. it. Well, um, the thing is that uh, in RCA, um, I, I will speak specifically for RCA because I was there during, uh, like, it was thing we were like one of the two last years before COVID hit, which was like online afterwards. So you would get a degree via Zoom, which was unbelievable for me, especially if you did stop motion. It's like they told you, like, you have to do a film in your own space and we'll give you a degree and you'll pay the same amount of money, which was, uh, it was crazy. Uh, they cut a lot of the funding for us to, for the production of the show and uh, the production we put into making those films. For example, they gave us a small budget for sound design, editing and uh, hiring people. But apart from that, we were like uh, working the films with our own money. So I thought like, uh, yeah, I mean, I could do this on my own, but I want you, the school to help me as well in more than uh, tell me uh, how to do it or if the directing is good or not. 
So that was a, that was a bummer for sure. Uh, but as I said, like my peeps helped me a lot in that, like, so which I'm grateful for. And you know, if we want to see the glass half full, not half empty, it's like if I hadn't met those people, probably my film wouldn't look like this because they told me very, very points that, okay, this should, would look like this way, and this elevated and changed the story a lot. So, uh, where does want to go? Yes, uh, as I said, uh, the fund was really hard for me because I had to postpone the studies for years. But other other than that, it was. I'm happy with uh, how the school works. Well, I'm not very happy. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, I mean, of course, there's a problem of the funding and everything, and uh, just like well, pretty much everyone, I also had to work during my studies, which postponed them a lot, but that wasn't even like mainly my issue because it's such a common thing in Greece so that you don't really see it as a negative like you get up in the morning you go to a cafe you serve a couple of coffees and then you go to school and it's all fine because everyone does it but what I was really mad at my school about it was that because of also the funding of uh, the educational system here uh, there were a lot of problems, like organizational problems. I would have my grades being lost a lot. Uh, we would have trouble, um, how do I say this, corresponding the subjects. There was this time that uh, we became from a technical institute into an actual university, and that was a whole kind of mess because we had to match the subjects and then we had to do extra subjects and all of that and nobody was helping. So I think there were a lot of times in that period that I was like, uh, is this really worth it to go through all of this? I mean, I love it, I wanna do it, but it's getting so hard for things like that, not even classes. So I don't know, it's the whole system here for me. Seems like they prepared her for a real career in animation. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, Hi. As far as I understood, you, two of you live in the UK? Or, or only you? Okay, but you, you have all experience from, from Erasmus or uh, uh, working abroad and working in Greece. Can you compare these two systems? Uh, I was working here in a different department. I was a web designer in a corporate company and now I work in stud animation studios, so it's so much difference. Um, I mean, yes, the, in the UK, uh, um, it's much better in working experience because uh, you usually don't work like over time and um, they respect your your work much more than in Greece and you're f more free to uh, uh, say your opinion and yes but it was in a different department so I don't have I have experience I ha I worked in some project in Greece uh, as a model maker in stop motion and I can say that it was like it was like uh, the UK this project yes so thank you um yeah thank you for all your um comments it's been really interesting because you've you've all made films that have traveled and been to film festivals um, and presumably you're now in an international forum how does it how do you feel being Greek in an international forum do you do you see many other Greek films at film festivals and how do you see yourself fitting in um, so I think that um, over the years, uh, as you know, Animashiro has grown, for example, so does has the Greek scene of animators. And I've been seeing uh, many Greek films getting selected into prestigious festivals, 
which is great. I feel I feel really happy for those people, especially when they're friends of mine or they know them personally. But if you consider the whole amount of applications that you know, lots of festivals get each year, uh, Greek the Greek animation production should be very very much percent small percentage of that. Even though if it's growing, it wouldn't seem as big as the whole the in a global scale for us yeah if we see it, you see it internally yeah it's it's a huge thing it's a huge step up like uh, not even in less than 10 years time uh but yeah i think the mediterranean animation is uh, needs more projection but still people are thriving to showcase their talents as i see it's, it it looks good for now i don't know what's going to happen next but uh, covid didn't stop us for sure <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I feel nice. I'm in serious now. I had my, I had my my swim in the morning. It's, it looks things look good. <laughs> yes, I feel really proud when I'm in a festival and there are more like Greek films. I'm like yes. <laughs> there are not many, but uh, I think as Dimitri said that. Uh, the last years there are more and more and I hope uh, because I know that many directors came back in Greece after the big crisis from abroad so I believe the next years it uh, will be much better for Greek uh, directors. I think I pretty much covered it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. We've got a twofer over there. Thank you for your presentations. Uh, they were uh, excellent, uh, um, very informative for, for us uh, uh, here in uh, Syros Island. Uh, we can uh, uh, stress out that uh, mm, it's also mm, something that we, we've we learned, uh, for instance, that you need uh, more uh, marketing effort from the schools. So, so this is uh, something uh, uh, that uh, it's not um, it's not easy to do in uh, Greece, uh, but uh, uh, I think that the culture is coming. Uh, for instance, we have now uh, imp the imposition from the, the uh, short film festival uh, of drama to propose uh, student films, graduation films uh, as schools uh, to to the festival, and I think that this culture will. Uh, will uh, grow uh, into the other universities too. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, the University of, the, of West Attica is one of the best in marketing because they have also a website and uh, they, they can uh, find your, your, uh, your films uh, online. So uh, they, 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 they do an effort uh, in, uh, in this uh, scope anyway. Uh, but but uh, there is a, a, a m more things to do uh, like uh, for instance, as if I had last put uh, for a couple of years uh, now uh, a student competition um, available to to Greek directors. So this is also a culture to uh, to, to be consumed uh, in the in the future. I think that we will do uh, better things for for students. And uh, I have a question to to pose to you um, uh, during your studies, uh, because I know that you come from applied arts uh, uh, studies, uh, uh, everyone there. Uh, if you want more collective works to be done during uh, your uh, final thesis, or uh, you still need to uh, be individually uh, supported uh, for uh, your films, and uh, this is something that uh, uh, it's important for us for uh, to, to to have a policy uh, in uh, in our studies uh, uh, here in the universities uh, in order to uh, foster collaboration, for instance, because animation is a collective work. Uh, uh, and I think that we do not do uh, such uh, uh, an effort in uh, in Greek universities. So, do you need collective works or not? This is my question. Absolutely, we do. Like, uh, you go outside of school and it's all collective work, so it's the best place for you to learn how to do that. Like making a film, and especially graduation films, where you have so much freedom 
as far as the subject, as far as everything else, you have the freedom to experiment and learn and all of that, and it's a safe space, it's the best place to learn to collaborate with other people as well. So I think that we should not only be able to do it inside, inside of the school departments, but also with maybe other school departments, like uh, script, uh, script departments, how can I say it? Uh, production, maybe, photography, yes, like collaborations with, well, as many schools as we can. I don't know if I'm missing what you and, and if other departments in the same school, because we have a photography department, so I could have a, a DOP for my movie, but I didn't, or like with other schools, yeah. So, uh, actually, can you uh, tell us how many people worked on each one of your films? You sort of mentioned it, but I'm not sure I got the full idea here. And what percentage of the work on the film did you do yourselves? Let's go overall? chronologically again, please. Um, okay, I would say that I put my hands even on sound, which I'm not a sound design guy, but I just had to because it's a student film. Um, it was a small team. Uh, around three to five people like that work consistently um, but I did like 70% of the work I'd say and the production time was uh, apart from writing down the script and uh, putting together the storyboard would be around eight to ten months like after the graduation show I still edited a few stuff and I think exported it in September so yeah. uh. In my film, uh, we were like three people and my tutor. <laughs> uh, I believe that I did like more than 90% because I built all the sets and the puppets. I did the animation, the editing, and I had a um, guy, John Kiritsis. Uh, he, is al he was also a student, in, student in, in my school and he wrote the music. Uh, and I had the guy doing the sound design. So apart from music and sound design, I did everything alone. Yeah, that was pretty much the same for me. I had uh, three friends doing sound design and music, and then animation was all me. Uh, the story was me and Mrs. Moody, and yeah, I don't know what percentage that would be, but yeah, <laughs> not a very fair one. <laughs> and actually, uh, just one uh, thing, Anastasia, you kind of alluded that because you uh, ended up working on it on your own, it ended up being easier. Is that a fair assumption? Why did you say that if you had done it at school, it wouldn't have been because as easy? It was COVID, so... If, just for that reason yes, not for if i was in school i couldn't go to do the shooting there because it was covid so i had all the time to do it in my home because it's stop motion you can't work remotely you have to work on studio so just from that point of view because i kind of felt as if you wouldn't have had yeah. an easy time working with other people or it was that wasn't even an option to pull when, other people in yes it. when i first started the movie, I didn't have in mind that I need people because I didn't know what I was doing. Now I know that uh, stop motion is not a lonely process. You need your team, but at the time I didn't know. So I just started doing something. Yeah. It is if you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I have a question. It's mainly for Anna, but maybe you also have another uh, experience like this. As far as I know, you're going to do your second graduation film now, since you're doing the master's, so it's going to be a student film again. Yes. Um, how different are the circumstances now from your uh, bachelor graduation film to the master? Uh, well, there is a very huge difference actually now, because uh, first of all, uh, because of the masters and also TAF Festival, I get the opportunity to actually get some funding for this film. 
through the Discovery Residency of FFFR, uh, European Festival Funds and for Emerging Artists. And so that's a huge relief for me to work and be able to get this opportunity and fund the film and like focus on that for a while. Um, other than that, I don't know, I actually haven't started making it, <laughs> which I should <laughs> probably, but see? Oh, yeah, yeah, I should, I really should. Uh, I think I am. I haven't started. I would love to have someone like help with the animation and everything. We have done now the whole development, which was done in class, and it was like individual work for the class, so that was already done by me. And well, I don't know. I would love to have someone come around and do the animation with me, actually. I just haven't really discussed it yet, which I should also. This uh, uh, maybe naive idea that uh, in animation schools other students work on other students' work, but is that it's just that something that's in my head, or it does actually happen? No, uh, yeah, it does. There are many uh, other movies in the university that uh, it's a collab from two or three directors, and you have help with animation, but it doesn't apply in our cases, but. You can do this. You have the right to do this. Yeah. Yes, I think yes. There are some people that do it like it's a crew. I think that it's actually kind of hard because we mainly learn, like as Anastasia said before, she didn't know that that is how it's supposed to be done. Like you're supposed to work as a team and well, getting our graduation films out there, that kind of goes to your question as well. Um, and interacting with people that are from abroad and have gone to universities abroad and they have a lot more of that collaboration in their system and they already know how to do it. So I think that it's something that should be more encouraged and then maybe we would get the initiative to work a lot better together. <laughs> Collaborate. Yes. And yes. It's a very, very big problem between the students. It's become a big problem because no one want to follow their work. So, <laughs> happen to cry, happen to change everything in ideas, happen to open the doors and go out. And uh, so it's very difficult. After in the selected lesson, in the elective lesson, it's more uh, easy to collaborate, you know it. Uh, but it's, um, the way of um, school, it's not animation. The principal place, in, uh, the, the principal uh, idea to the school is graphic design. So uh, it's more difficult to, to work with the students who uh, go to the graphic design or with the, uh, the last lessons, the last uh, years, the students come to learn animation, but how to have the possibility to give lesson in animation in hundred people for our four hours in a week. So I think it's very, very difficult, except um, two, three, four people any year, since uh, we are happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I speak from the part of the professors. Yes. Uh, that's actually, Mrs. Elaine, what I was thinking about. Uh, I think because both of you were 
in graphic design uh, schools also like for me photography uh, I think those materials and those schools and universities are handled more in solidarity so maybe the whole idea of a thesis in those schools um, like the thesis in graphic design or photography schools it's supposed to be like a small exhibition of your own talent so maybe I want your opinion on like do you think the fact that like if it was an animation school that its base was different it would be like the collective part of it would be better handled i think for sure and i think that what miss mori said was a great example because actually the first uh, class we have and we need to work as a group is actually storyboard which is something that we need a lot in animation, but somebody that uh, is only there for graphic design, well, they do need it, but not just as much. So they don't really care about it. So for me personally, I had a terrible experience with the storyboard class with my team. Uh, I don't even remember if we presented the project at the end. I think I failed and redid it the next year. Terrible experience didn't really want to work as a team again for some years and then we got to the second semester of animation uh, class where we also needed to work as a team uh, also had a person in there that didn't want to do anything and that was very discouraging for me as well but then we actually found people that we collaborated well together and it all went so smoothly and nice but at the end even those bad experiences were a lesson for me because outside outside well after school you're not going to be able to collaborate well with everyone so it's a lesson as well even though it's very discouraging it should be how it's supposed to be you should do that inception, inception. they actually taught you that see i did full circle <laughs> hi so I also have a question. Uh, do you think that this problem, ah, this problem, no, do you think that this problem of uh, collaboration between different fields of artistically speaking is also a matter of, let's say, hierarchy and exclusivity and um, kind of prestigious uh, perception of the arts and that's why there are problems between teams? Like uh, in <laughs> uh, does anybody want to <laughs> I can say more but say. like do you mean hierarchy within the team or between different uh, jobs inside the same project okay talking about like working on the same project Yes, of course, there's a, well, I think that a team should work like a well-oiled machine and if there's one screw missing, then the whole thing falls apart, which is the most basic thing you can say, obviously, but uh, at the same time, not many people understand this, especially in making films, there, there's a lot of misconception that only the director matters or only the animator matters or whatever like it's it is the sound design people it's the music it's everything so if one thing doesn't work nice nothing works so yeah i don't get it at all it does happen a lot a lot <laughs> but yeah it shouldn't uh, i can explain something about this it's uh, the educational system in greece from the elementary school Everybody must work alone, must say to the teacher, ah, blah, 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 blah. So, like uh, a pilot, <laughs> and it's enough. So, when, when uh, step by step must uh, collaborate, it's very, very difficult because 12 years is one by one and more in the final years in i think 10 years now uh, uh, become a situation i am the first no i am the first no work 
not, not have the possibility, the children, to collaborate with the others and to collaborate in the same step. We are all together and we must collaborate. This has become from six years. So when one uh, people come to, uh, to 20, it's very, very difficult to explain that. Must collaborate outside in the work. You don't have the possibility to, to, to choose with who collaborate. Here you have it and happen this. Um, this is a sort of general question. Um, how many animation courses are there in Greece and have they all got different characteristics like one is more experimental, one is more, because in Britain I think we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of um, animation courses but they've all got different personalities and in Bournemouth, um, a college in Bournemouth, it's all collaborative, you know, so the students that want to work in, in collaboration with other students apply to Bournemouth because in their final year, one film is chosen, you know, so they all put their scripts in, but then they're not all chosen, just a few are chosen, and then all of the others who didn't get chosen have to work on the others' films, and that's how it's done, and they're all happy. I don't know how they're happy, because I wouldn't be happy, but <laughs> they know that when they apply to the course, you know. So, um, yeah, so I was just wondering about the courses that are in Greece. The only, <laughs> the only animation courses is in our school. It's uh, in graphic design, it's only one, uh, one course for uh, storyboard and uh, one course for a cartoon, one course for prepare a film. So I mean, the people who collaborate in, 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 uh, in the course of uh, storyboard must work in the same film for finish it for the seventh semester and uh, more we have um, one lesson for um, 3D environment and 3D movement and it's enough. Uh, we have uh, two schools for uh, cinema but they don't have uh, courses for animation. So the people who work become to work in animation, be, uh, they are from graphic design department and not from cinema department. So the first lesson that we have all those troubles is uh, the first, uh, the first uh, step to, to explain for, the, uh, for uh, the narration, for the script, for uh, the storyboard, for uh, the angles of the camera, for moving of camera, everything. And uh, it's very difficult. Very small, only small hours. Hello, I'm Anastasia Dimitra from uh, the, fiber, uh, the private sector because Eleni uh, described the national uh, higher education. Uh, we have also a school, a three-year um, school that drive, uh, drives to a BA uh, degree, uh, which is dedicated to animation for the whole uh, period that the, the students are uh, study there. And uh, there is a history of 30 years that the, the prog this program uh, existed, and uh, Sergio know <laughs> something about that. Um, and um, I think that um, it should be also uh, a public school that uh, could be dedicated uh, to animation. Also at uh, Pada, the university that uh, Eleni described, there is a, a postgraduate uh, uh, program which is dedicated uh, to this uh, field. Thank you. So, right. 
ACTO and is a validated college of Middlesex University. I know why you are happy. <laughs> I think it's, uh, <laughs> it is endless. It's, I'm really happy we're having this conversation. I'm also, I'm so incredibly proud that we have this much Greek animation with how we get there. So I'm gonna end up in that note because these are very, very talented people that have come up in some way through the system, so. Yanni, yeah, you're off camera. Yes. Yanni, yeah, you're off camera. It's okay. <laughs> I'm saying that after this discussion, which was really interesting, and we are really happy that uh, we organized all this, uh, you know, dialogue. Uh, it was for me. It was uh, very important, n not only to realize what's going on with the, uh, our Greek uh, creators that they are doing fantastic. When you realize the background, uh, the, the, how the education is not, uh, I mean, com compared to. <coughs> other European countries, uh, but it's, it, it is also an opportunity and a call to the universities in Greece to collaborate because we have a very good film school. I mean, the film school could easily collaborate with your school and exchange or even collaborate with schools abroad and have visitors coming here and Yeah, no, in, in the field of animation and in, in film in general. I mean, you can't start doing movies when you don't know what movie is. I mean, it, it, it's number one, uh, I mean, approach. So if we have a, such a good film school already more than 10 years, well, 15 years now, 15 years, yes. And the Saloniki, yes. No, they don't, but they could collaborate with departments and have, you know, exchange. I mean, that's why we're doing all this, just to, to let them know that uh, we, we beg them to go, you know, to do I something. Yeah. So, <laughs> I am begging you. So, we are, uh, well, this was, this has been great. Uh, a round of applause for our guests, please. Uh, we'll take a five-minute break, and then we're going to come back and talk about European schools and what they're doing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.